Hello students, this is the review for Spiral 10. As a reminder, the goal here is to give you some resources that you can use to help you on your Spiral. Ideally, you're gonna be making this review into something that you can use while you're taking the Spiral, so you have uh, some support there. First off, we've got some sum of difference and double angle identities. The goal is to verify these things, to show that they are true. For cosine, we're looking cosine subtraction, so I'm going to take a look, okay, cosine, subtraction, that's my bottom path, so it's the plus there, so it's going to be sine, so this is my alpha and beta, so it's going to be cosine pi over 2 times cosine theta, and plus sine pi over 2 uh, sine theta, and now I'm gonna just check these values out. So pi over two is up here. That's the point zero, one. We know cosine is x, sine is y. So that would be zero times cosine of theta plus one times sine of theta. That's gonna give giving us sine of theta, which is what we want at the beginning. For the second one, we've got the same type of thing, uh, including cosine subtraction. So that's gonna be using the same formula cosine theta, cosine of 180, uh, plus sine of theta, sine of 180, and over here, we're at negative 1 and 0. Alright, so we've got cosine theta, cool. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. We've got sine of theta, cool and sine of 180 is zero. That part goes away, leaving us with negative cosine of theta. On the next page, we got some double angle identities. Uh, I noticed that the left side of our first one is more complicated. Uh, I also noticed that the stuff on the bottom looks kind of familiar. So I'm gonna hold off for just a second and take a look to see what I have over here. Can I find two sine cosine over here? And I, oh, almost immediately I do. That's sine of 2 theta. So I could rewrite this as cosine of uh, 2 theta over sine of 2 theta. And that's kind of cool, because that's cosine over sine. Uh, I know based on my other identities that that's going to be cotangent of 2 theta. And cotangent of theta is going to be 1 over tangent of 2 theta, which is what we're trying to get at the beginning. For the next one, uh, if I take a look at this, the stuff that is on the left looks more complicated. So I'm going to start there. I'm also going to take a look at my function here. And I've got uh, both sine and secant here, so I might try to go for something with sine. So no secant goes with cosine. I've already got some cosine stuff for sine. I'm going to look for the one of these that deals with sine, and that's going to be this one here. So we've got 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Okay, let's simplify. 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus minus 2 is going to be 2 sine squared theta. Then we have cosine squared theta. And I noticed that we've got our sine part, so we're cool. I don't know why I switched to theta. I always go to x. That's weird. Uh, for both of these, I did that. That's crazy. And then secant squared is the same as 1 over cosine squared, so we actually got that. 2 sine squared theta times secant squared theta. All right, so next up we got some solving true equations. We got a unit circle here that you can move around. I can't because it's PDF set. For the first one, I see both cosine and sine. I'm going to bring everything to the same side. And when I do that, I've got cosine of theta, sine of theta, uh, minus 1. Cosine of theta is equal to 0. I'm going to factor out of cosine theta. And we're left with sine theta minus 1, which is equal to 0. All right, gives us cosine theta equals 0 and sine theta equals 1. All right, on our unit circle, that is going to be here for cosine theta is equal to 0, because that's 0, 1. And here, 
So we're going to get theta is equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 from that. For sine equals 1, well, we've already included pi over 2 there. Uh, that's the only place that sine has a value of 1. All right, for our next one, same thing. I'm going to get everything on the same side. I'm going to keep my cosine squared positive. And that's going to become 4 cosine squared theta. And then if I minus 1 and then plus 2, is going to be plus 1 at the end. Plus 4 cosine theta. This is going to be a factoring problem. So what I'm going to do is write u equals cosine theta to make factoring this a little bit easier for us. That gets us 4u squared plus 4u plus 1. Okay, and that's equal to 0. That's going to factor into 2u plus 1 squared, which means we have two different versions that are both 2u plus 1 is equal to 0, which means 2u equals negative 1 and u equals negative 1 half. Cool, but we have cosine is equal to u. And I've got to figure out where my x values are negative 1 half. So think about this as the two that have negative 1 half are going to be here and here. You're going to have root 3 over 2 as the y values. These are going to be by pi over 3 angles in the second and third quadrant. So that's going to give us 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Then we're moving on to some matrix stuff. We're trying to combine things and write them as we can or, def or decide if they're undefined. Undefined are going to come when we cannot combine them. So if we have two different uh, numbers of elements where we're adding, subtracting, or multiplying with things that don't work out well. For the first one, I'm going to do this distribution first, the scalar multiplication. That's going to give us 15x and 6xy. And to that, I'm going to add my other functions. So 6x, 3x. When we do those people, we've got 15x minus 6x for our top and 6xy plus 3x on the bottom. That gets us 9x on top and 6xy plus 3x on the bottom. All right, for the second one, I'm just going to count these. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we are OK with combining these. 2x minus y squared is going to be our first element. I'm going to color code these just so we can tell the difference. We've got 0 minus 6x is minus 6x for our second element. Third element, 3y minus y is going to be 2y plus 4. And then fourth element, we've got y minus negative 6y is going to be 7y and then minus x. For multiplying matrices, we're going to do row by column. So we've got first row, first column. I call this row 1, column 1. That's going to be negative 6 plus negative 12 is negative 18. Row 1, column 2 is going to be... Uh, 12 plus 10, which is 22. Row 1, column 3, is going to be negative 12 plus 8, uh, which is going to be negative 4. Row 2, column 1, is going to be positive 3 minus 6, which is going to be, uh, sorry, we were at this row, row 1, column 1, uh, row 2, column 1, rather. So we said that was going to be positive 3 minus 6, so negative 3. Uh, then I'm going to switch colors. We've got row 2, column 2. It's going to be negative 6. And then plus 5 is negative 1. And then we're going to have row 2, column 3. And when we do that, we end up with positive 6 positive 4, and that's going to be 10. So my final matrix is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix. Negative 18, 22, negative 4, negative 3, negative 1, and 10. We get one more multiplication. This is going to be one row each time. The first time we're going to do by the first column, that's going to be negative xy plus 0. Ooh, every term is going to be 0. That's going to be really nice. Then we got the same thing for our second one. 
we've got 6xy and then 0 in the bottom. And then same thing for our third column. We're going to have negative 3x squared and then 0 on the bottom. Since we don't have a second row to add, this is our final multiplied matrix. For the last part, we're going to do some inverses and multiplying by things. So I'm going to find the inverse of this uh, matrix first. And when I do that, I've got to find my determinant. That's going to be based on 8 times 3 is 24. Minus 16 is going to be 8. So the first thing we'll do is say that 1 over 8, 1 over the determinant, is going to go out front. For the next part, I'm going to switch my top left and bottom right. That gives me 3 and 8, respectively. The other two become negative. That's when we're going to multiply to both sides of this. So we're going to have 1 eighth, 3, negative 4, negative 4, 8, times 8, 4, 4, 3, z is equal to, and I'm going to multiply on the same side, so I'm going to do 1 eighth, 3, negative 4, negative 4, 8, and then we've got 16, negative 40, 10, negative 18. Cool. On the left side, this stuff is gone, leaving us just with z. On the right side, we've got first row times first column. That's going to be 48 minus 40 is going to be 8. First row, second column, negative 120 uh, plus 72. Oof. That's going to be uh, 50 less 2 is 48. Then we got, uh, we should have a 1 8 out front. Uh, second row, we've got negative 64 plus 80 is going to be 16. And then we're going to have positive 160 and minus. 144 is going to be 16 again. 1 eighth of all of those gives us 1, negative 6, 2, 2. All right. Um, I'm going to see if it'll let me shrink that a little bit. Nope, that's fine. I made myself a little bit of room anyway. All right, so for the next one, I've got to find the inverse of this guy. Um, that's going to be 8 minus 0 is 1 over 8 out front again. 2, 4, negative 2, and 0. Really, we're just multiplying this by that other matrix on the left there. So I'm just going to show that side of this. 0, 36, negative 22, 38. And that's going to be equal to C. So let's take a look. We got 0 and 0, so that's going to be 0. Okay. Um, so for the second one, we've got 72 and 0. That's going to be 72. For the third part, we've got 0 and 4 times negative 22 is negative 88. And then we're going to have negative uh, 72 and positive 76 times 2. So it's going to be 80. Sorry for doing the weird mathy version of my head there. Uh, and then one eighth of this is going to give us 0, 9, negative 11, and 10.